Dear fellow truth seekers, thank you and welcome for visiting my channel, Mitha Religio. Mitha Religio is a video channel based on a book series with the same name about religious comparison studies between the stories in Judaism, Christianity, Islam, Hinduism, and Buddhism, directly from their sacred books and world mythologies, hence the name Mitha Religio. The purpose is to retrace the prehistory of humanity, since I'm not fully satisfied with either the explanations from the point of view of creationists nor evolutionists. There are so many missing links in both explanations. If you feel the same, then you are on the right channel. In this channel, I will also analyze about the prehistory of humanity from the archaeological records, modern scientific point of view, and other alternative theories such as the ancient alien theories and Atlantis or Lemuria legends. After thorough research of circa 30 years, I recognize many, many similarities between all religious stories and even mythologies, and surprisingly, some of them are in accordance or even beyond modern science that have been proven as correct. Thus, I came to the conclusion that all religions must have come from the same source, and all these religious stories and mythologies, although heavily jumbled up, are actually telling one mega story, a true prehistory of our common ancestors. This mega story is quite different than what we have been told to believe and will truly blow your mind as it is more fascinating than our imagination. If you have watched the earlier videos in this channel, I believe you can see some of the similarities too. If you haven't and you truly want to do a religious comparative study, I suggest that you do so. The best way to do a comprehensive religious study via this channel is by watching the videos starting from number one and continue until this present video and so on. That way you will see a clear pattern. In this channel, I will share almost all that I have written in my book series. However, there is one book so far that I cannot share in this channel due to its sensitive, shocking and dark nature and also might be considered controversial to some, but I believe it sheds more light to the above conclusion. If you want to read this around 500 pages ebook with many full color illustrations, you are more than welcome to download book number 5 entitled History of the Dark Side that is available for free in ebook format that can be found in my website www.mythorology.com You only have to give your email address and it will be sent to you directly. And no, I won't share your email address nor send any advertisement. The link is in the description box. If you want to get the physical book, kindly go to amazon.com Now let's continue with this week's video. Evolution on land. Is it possible? Dear fellow truth seekers, for the last few weeks I have shared with you the scientific theories on the origin of life, i.e. the theory of evolution and the Big Bang Theory, for our religious versus science comparison study. I did this in order to find answers to the questions that are not answered satisfactorily by religion. In the last video, I have shared with you one of the many missing links in the theory of evolution that haven't been answered by science satisfactorily, i.e. about evolution from water to land, or from fish to amphibians. Now let's continue to analyze the next evolution stage. Frog. The next transformation was from fish to reptiles. Amphibians are considered as the intermediate form in this evolutionary stage. Frog is an example of amphibians. Nonetheless, frogs cannot be classified as an intermediary form. Why? Because in an intermediary form, they should have both gills and lungs at the same time. This is not the case. Young frogs or tadpoles have perfectly functioning gills, but lose them as they grow into frogs. Frogs can still live in water as they breathe through their skin and they live on land via their perfectly functioning lungs. 
The transition happens in each individual frog, which means the command is embedded in their DNA. Frogs stay as frogs. It seems like they're just built that way. Fossils of frogs from millions of years ago show that they look exactly like frogs today. So when will they evolve? There is no evidence of any Paleozoic amphibians combining the characteristics that would be expected in a single common ancestor. The oldest known frogs, salamander and caecilians, are very similar to their living descendants. Evolution of the vertebrates by evolutionist paleontologists Colbert and Morales. Turtle. Similarly, turtles, which are classified as reptiles, also appear in the fossil record all of a sudden with their unique shells. There is no difference between the fossil of ancient turtles and the living members of this species today. Simply put, turtles have not evolved. They have always been turtles. Again, there is a missing link between this evolutionary stage. By the middle of the Triassic period, about 175 million years ago, its turtles members were already numerous and in possession of the basic turtle characteristics. The links between turtles and cotylosaurs from which turtles probably sprang are almost entirely lacking. Source Encyclopedia Britannica, 1971, volume 22, page 418. There is not even a single fossil verifying that a half-fish, half-amphibian creature has ever existed. The early reptiles were very different from amphibians and their ancestors have not been found yet. Source Vertebrate Paleontology and Evolution by Robert L. Carroll Evolution on Land From Reptiles to Mammals the theory of evolution proposes that some creatures that came out of the sea turn into reptiles. Then, some reptiles became the ancestors of both mammals and some of birds. However, there are great differences between these two classes. Mammals are warm-blooded animals. This means they can generate their own heat and maintain it at a steady level. They give life birth. They suckle their young, and their bodies are covered in fur or hair. Reptiles, on the other hand, are cold-blooded, i.e. they cannot generate heat, and their body temperature changes according to the external temperature. They lay eggs and do not suckle their young, and their bodies are covered in scales. One example of the structural barriers between reptiles and mammals is their jaw structure. Mammal jaws consist of only one mandibular bone containing the teeth. In reptiles, there are three little bones on both sides of the mandible. Another basic difference is that all mammals have three bones in their middle ear, hammer, anvil, and stirrup. Reptiles have but a single bone in the middle ear. Evolutionists propose that the reptile jaw and middle ear gradually evolved into the mammal jaw and ear. The question of how an ear with a single bone evolved into one with three bones and how the sense of hearing kept on functioning in the meantime can never be explained. Not surprisingly, not one single fossil linking reptiles and mammals has been found. This is why well-known evolutionist paleontologist Roger Lewin had to say, the transition to the first mammal, which probably happened in just one or at most two lineages, is still an enigma. The most puzzling event in the history of life on Earth is the change from the Mesozoic, the age of reptiles, to the age of mammals. It is as if the curtain were rung down suddenly on the stage, where all the leading roles were taken by reptiles, especially dinosaurs, in great numbers and bewildering variety and rose again immediately to reveal the same setting but an entirely new cast. A cast in which dinosaurs do not appear at all, and the reptiles are supernumeraries, and all the leading parts are played by mammals of sorts barely hinted at in the preceding acts. Life Before Man by George Gaylord Simpson, evolutionary authorities and a founder of the Neo-Darwinist theory. 
Furthermore, when mammals suddenly made their appearance, they were already very different from each other. Such dissimilar animals as bats, horses, mice, and whales are all mammals, and they all emerged during the same geological period. How do we explain the evolutionary relationship among them? It is impossible even by the broadest stretch of the imagination. The evolutionist zoologist R. Eric Lombard makes this point in an article that appeared in the leading journal Evolution, Volume 33, December 1979. Those searching for specific information useful in constructing phylogenies of mammalian taxa will be disappointed. Horse Evolution One example that is often used by evolutionists is the evolution of the horse family. Until recently, a sequence supposedly showing the evolution of horses was advanced as the principal fossil evidence for the theory of evolution. Today, however, many evolutionists themselves frankly admit that the scenario of horse evolution cannot be justified. In 1980, a four-day symposium was held at the Field Museum of Natural History in Chicago with 150 evolutionists in attendance to discuss the problems with gradualistic evolutionary theory. In addressing the meeting, evolutionist Boyce Ransberger noted that the scenario of the evolution of the horse has no foundation in the fossil record and that no evolutionary process has been observed that would account for the gradual evolution of horses. The popularly told example of horse evolution, suggesting a gradual sequence of changes from four-toed fox-sized creatures living nearly 50 million years ago to today's much larger one-toed horse has long been known to be wrong. Instead of gradual change, fossils of each intermediate species appear fully distinct, persist unchanged, and then become extinct. Transitional forms are unknown. Source, Boyce Ransberger, Houston Chronicle, November 5, 1980. Dr. Niles Eldridge, a curator at the American Museum in New York, where evolution of the horse diagrams were on public display at the time on the ground floor of the museum, said the following about the exhibition. There have been an awful lot of stories, some more imaginative than others, about what the nature of that history of life really is. The most famous example, still on exhibit downstairs, is the exhibit on horse evolution prepared perhaps 50 years ago that has been presented as the literal truth in textbook after textbook. Now, I think it is lamentable, particularly when the people who propose those kind of stories may themselves be aware of the speculative nature of some of that stuff. Source Harper's Magazine, February 1985, page 60. Then, what is the basis for the scenario of the evolution of the horse? The scenario was formulated by means of deceitful charge devised by the sequential arrangements of fossil of distinct species that lived at vastly different periods in India, South Africa, North America, and Europe solely in accordance with the rich power of evolutionist imaginations. More than 20 charts of the evolution of the horse, which by the way are totally different from each other, have been proposed by various researchers. Source, Harun Yahya, Evolution Deceit. Wow, shocking, isn't it? Thus, it is obvious that evolutionists have reached no common agreement on these family trees. The only common feature in this arrangement is the belief that a dog-sized creature called Eohippus, which lived in the Eocene period 55 million years ago, was the ancestor of the horse or Ecus. But the supposed evolutionary lines from Eohippus to Ecus are totally inconsistent. The evolutionist science writer Gordon R. Taylor explains this little acknowledged truth in his book The Great Evolution Mystery. But perhaps the most serious weakness of Darwinism is the failure of paleontologists to find convincing phylogenies or sequences of organisms demonstrating major evolutionary change. 
the horse is often cited as the only fully worked out example. But the fact is that the line from Yohippus to Ecus is very erratic. It is alleged to show a continual increase in size, but the truth is that some variance was smaller than Yohippus, not larger. Specimens from different sources can be brought together in an convincing looking sequence. But there is no evidence that they were actually arranged in this order in time. Source Gordon Rattray Taylor, The Great Evolution Mystery. Wow, wow, wow. So, upon analysis, scientific explanation concerning the evolution on land, like evolution from water to land, is actually hard to defend. Next week, we will continue with the analysis of evolution from land animal to air, i.e. birds. But for now, allow me to thank you for watching and hope to see you next week.